Hey everybody, surprise, blondes have more fun. Today, we're gonna to talk about mental health again. So I'm gonna bring on one of my friends and one of uh, the inaugural members of Light Side. So let's bring him on. Thanks everybody for joining. Hey, all right. how are you doing? Doing all right. Can you hear me? I can. Excellent. Good to see you again. Great to see you. I see we're going opposite directions with our hair. <laughs> That's right. I'm coming your way. We almost have similar <laughs> colors here now. Well, I'm, I'm having my COVID cut, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I had that as well. There you go. Things are going well? Yes. Excellent. Thanks for joining. My pleasure. Glad to help. So um, why don't you take a minute and just, you know, say who you are, where you practice, where you went to school, uh, all that stuff. All right. Uh, my name is Elliot Dibbs. I graduated from University of Illinois uh, Dental School in 1993. Uh, left there, did a residency, bounced around. I've been in Florida for oh, 21 years now. I've been practicing out in Lakeland, Florida, which is uh, in between Tampa and Orlando on I-4 for geography's sake. Um, for the last eight years and uh it's pretty great now <laughs> and are you in for for people who don't know i know this but are you in private practice setting group practice it is a large private practice uh i work for two oral surgeons and my practice is entirely limited almost entirely limited to full arch implant reconstruction awesome so i haven't worked on teeth in a really long time <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting to that point as well. Yeah, uh, I don't miss giving shots. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's true, because you're not doing the surgery, you're doing the no, restoration. So. I do just the prosthetics. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a, a, a great deal of stress is, is missing now. Yes. Um, well, that's plus why we're not here to talk. Practice anymore. Um, but yeah, that's the short version. Uh, if you yeah. kind of get into the longer version in a little bit, uh, might explain a few things as to why I ended up here. Sure. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's basically it. Uh, and I'm, and you saw me speak at Florida Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. Is that right? Correct. I believe that was twenty eighteen. Yeah, that sounds right. I think. Yeah, so that was one of the twenty nineteen. That was yeah, one of the first big conferences where I was talking about mental health. Yeah. So you kind of caught one of the first ones. And it was uh jaw dropping, uh to put it mildly. Well, let, let's put it this way. As soon as pretty much we left that room, I started stalking you on Instagram and look <laughs> at us now. <laughs> um, but it was uh the 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 whole day of your lecture was fascinating stuff. I mean, there's stuff that I use today that you introduced to me during that lecture. Well, thank and you. normally, um, I think you can relate to this uh, uh, statement. There comes a point where you go to continuing education courses for a whole day, hoping maybe you bring home two nuggets of information, you know? Right. And I had pages of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good to hear. So, that was great. Um, but then all of a sudden, for lunch, you took this hard left turn into mental right. health. I mean, and it was like zero segue. Boom. Yeah. Here's where we're going. Yeah. And it was um, probably the most useful thing I'd heard in a continuing ed class in 20 years. Wow. <laughs> approximately. Because nobody talks about it. Right. And you brought it completely out into the open. And um, a friend of mine who practices down in Sarasota was, I don't know, halfway in front of me. And at one point, she, she and one of her assistants, who I've known for a really long time, just turned around like this at me. <laughs> and I'm like, I know. <laughs> um, but it, it, it set a new tone for the rest of the meeting, I think, for everybody. 
and uh, in a positive way. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's a difficult conversation, but it's sure. a conversation that really needs to be had. I think yeah. we can all agree on that. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much how my path with you started was um, just this having this uh, curtain opened to yeah. kind of make the conversation acceptable among us in that space. Yeah, uh, which that just doesn't happen. Yeah, and I think that's the um, that's what I've been trying to do very simply at the beginning. So before I had this course and before I was speaking was just like, I wanted to start talking about it so that other people could start talking about it and even like use me as a scapegoat, you know, like, oh, I saw Kyle talk about this, like, you know, and then ha have a reason to bring it up to a colleague or a friend or something. <laughs> I kind of go the opposite than the scapegoat. I'm like, you got to listen to this. Dude. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a different conversation for me. Yeah. Maybe um, scapegoat isn't the right word. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you the, the, the statistics that you were discussing and, um, you know, the three biggest fears for people and all that stuff. That's yeah. all that stuck to me. I didn't, I didn't look at my notes <laughs> or anything today. Um, the one that was the most, I think jarring would be when you asked the room if those of us that knew a dentist that committed suicide to raise their hand and you look around the room and it had to be 70 or 80. It was more than not. I mean, the, yeah. the overwhelming majority of people had their hand in the air. Mm -hmm. And, um, and when I got back to my practice, I asked a couple of the people, my, some of my lab techs that have been around for a while and um, the surgeons, and they're like, oh, yeah, we know mm -hmm. them. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, the first time that I asked that question, I wasn't really prepared. And I asked that question, I think there were maybe about 100 people in the room. It wasn't like FACD, but that was massive, uh, you know, about 100 people. And about, I would say 70%, like you said, raised their hand. Yeah. And I just like broke down. I just like started crying on stage. It was just like, oh my gosh, I wasn't expecting this. I think that in the audience, we we're having a similar reaction. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I didn't see anybody sniffling in their sleeve. Right. But I saw a lot of people with a very shell-shocked look on their face mm -hmm. um, that did not go away very easily. Even right. after the lecture, you, you see people out in the, you know, walking towards the hotel bar or whatever, and they just look like they, we've all seen ghosts. Right. You know, and yeah. uh, in, in some cases, a lot of us did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was true. Uh, Thinking back of friends or colleagues um, or, you know, people you may have heard of. Yeah, yeah uh, probably the best friend I had in dental school killed himself. Wow. You know, years after I moved to Florida, but, uh, you know, yeah, and that was not a great phone call to get. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it's pervasive. It's yeah. Essentially, it. yeah. I, I had one of my uh, one of my students in dental school commit suicide. I remember that. Mm -hmm. I remember that. That was that was a heartbreaking story. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm glad I was there. Okay. <laughs> um, not just for the clinical stuff that that I brought home, but but especially that part, because that was the part I was talking about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, 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 that, that evening, I'm on social media talking about this stuff. And, you know, uh, I was talking to my girlfriend about it, you know, because she wasn't there. And uh, I was just like, this was unbelievable, uh, this discussion. And you are bringing, um, well, you're a research guy. I mean, you're, right. you, you, you're a literature dork. And I, yeah. and I love that because I'm not. <laughs> so like I can boil bringing... the ocean down for you and give you the nuggets that you need, right? Not, not just me, not just yeah. me. <laughs> um, but you, you brought recent research, recent numbers, because we've all heard the, yeah. oh, you, why'd you go become a dentist? You want to kill yourself? Blah, right. blah, blah, stuff. And when in reality, I, I came to realize a long time ago, it's not just dentists, it's, you know, all of these solo practitioner situations mm -hmm. are kind of in a similar, not the same, but a similar boat. Mm -hmm. um, so chiropractors and vets and, and that yeah. sort of thing. Um, but for us, it's just, and you brought all that information, like 
here's what's been going on in the last few years in yeah. the literature. And I was like, whoa. Um, you know, talking about the prevalence of mental illness compared to the general population. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, what, did we bring it to the party or did we get made this way? <laughs> right. Uh, I think it's a combination. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. <laughs> Personally, um, because I know I brought mine to the party. Right. You know, I, 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 my issues with depression, anxiety, and all that, 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 that was nothing new. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that started junior high. Yeah. So, you know, and I just happened to pick one of the worst possible professions for that part of for my that health, specific, right? yeah. <laughs> But it, it, that wouldn't, that wasn't the deal killer. I mean, I, I would have sure. been having issues regardless. Um, yeah. Uh, maybe with varying levels of support or whatever the case might be, but that was not going to be unique. Well, that's why I and, think you were so important to have in our first light side course. And I'm so glad that you joined because you came in, I would say most, most dentists, haven't started a mental health journey yet. And I'm hoping that that, that light side can be an introduction, introduction for that. You came yeah. in having gone through a few years or even many years of, um, I, th- I think you've had, you've had therapy before, you've you know, thought about different ways of thinking, you've thought about um, wow. how to adjust your profession on this. So you came in as like, someone who has so much experience in this and you in our course you kind of became a mentor i mean i think it was the first week you were on with me sharing your story which i really appreciated can you uh can you talk a little bit about that pleasure yeah i'd be glad to um the i i had issues with depression and anxiety although i didn't know it was anxiety back then um, I just thought I had a jumpy stomach and, and, and stuff like that. Um, you know, stress would really affect my GI system and, and mm-hmm. things like that. Um, it wasn't until fairly recently that I'm like, mm, I think we got some anxiety issues here yeah. on top of the other stuff. Um, and looking back at my history, I'm like, oh, yeah, there's definitely an anxiety component to this. Um but essentially, I recognized that I had issues with depression. Um, mm-hmm. High school, yeah. ish. Um, uh, not going to get into a whole lot of stuff. But at one point, uh, somebody, I don't know who, referred the school counselor, whatever usefulness that is in a public school, even uh, back then, um, in the '80s. You know, and they called me out of class one day to mm. go talk to a counselor, and I was going to have nothing to do with it. Yeah. Um, you know, being stubborn and 17, you know, you know, everything, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> man, if only I was as smart now as I was then. Uh, <laughs> I think we can all say that. <laughs> but, um, you know, in, in, in college, I think that was the first time I actually uh, had a discussion with somebody and they're like, look, you're, you need more help than we can give you in student services. And I just never followed up with any of that. Mm -hmm. So I was essentially an undiagnosed, untreated uh, person with depression. Let's see, graduated in 93 from dental school. 2002 is when I finally got some help. And the only reason I got help was I didn't know if I was going to make it through the day. Mm. That day. Um, it, the, the, the stress on me had just, I bought a prep. My wife and I had moved. We got sick of winter. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chicago, that'll do that to you. Yeah. My dad we, went to dental school in Chicago, so uh, I hear yeah. you. Uh, winter is great to visit. Right. <laughs> Give me a weekend. I'm good then. Um, but we uh, we moved to Key West. Just we're like, we're out of here. We moved to Key West for a few years and then. Uh, cool place, but it's a hard place to live. Yeah. Um, and, and both of you better be on board. And that was not the situation. Uh, so moved to Venice, bought a practice in 2000. And in, um, I really had no intention of ever, ever being a dad. And uh, in late 2001, turns out I'm going to be a dad. So, you know, in early 2002, everything was flying apart. Yeah. And I just, 
so I, I did the only thing I could think of to do, which was one of my patients was a general practitioner uh, physician, and I called called him. I'm just like, look, I don't know what to do. I'm just completely spinning out of control. He's like, can you be at my office? You're, he's like, you're off on Friday, which is two days later. He's like, you can come in on Friday, right? I was like, yeah. He's like, be there at 10. Um, he brought me in, sat me down. We talked, made sure that I wasn't in acute distress, you know, all that right. stuff physically. And, you know, went to his closet and handed me this giant bag full of Zoloft and said, I want to see you back in like X amount of time and we're going to do a full physical and all that. It turned out he didn't have an appointment for like four months. Wow. I found out later. And uh, he's just like, you're coming in now. He knew. And uh, if it wasn't for that, I don't know what what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my first episode with treatment. Um, yeah. Was on Solaw for a number of years. Uh, tried some therapy, didn't find the right person, um, ended up going off Zoloft um, sort of unintentionally a few years later uh, because, you know, just to make sure everything was going super great in my world, uh, my wife and I split up at my daughter's first birthday. Mm. Um, that's worked out great, <laughs> you know, happily Good. divorced. Good. Um, ripped the bandaid off fast. My daughter has no knowledge of anything other than us being apart. Yeah. And uh, her mom and I get along as well as can be expected. You know, she and her husband come to, to my house for Thanksgiving. Oh, wow. That's good to hear. Cool. So, yeah. Um, you know, day after Christmas, I was over at their house. Since we didn't do Christmas and I'm the family cook for holidays, I brought over, I, I went ahead and made the holiday meals and I brought them to my brother and my dad and to, to her and her, uh, her husband. Uh, so that's, in the end, that worked out great. It's <laughs> yeah. not easy to get there. I bet. Um, but so my marriage has fallen apart. Uh, it has fallen apart. And within the year, my practice was falling apart. Uh, so I'm getting divorced and going bankrupt simultaneously. Um, wow. Managed to get out of it with my practice and more or less debt free. Um, Amazing. <laughs> I don't recommend it as a business plan. I'm going to live <laughs> a shorter life because of this. Right. I can guarantee, guarantee you from the stomach acid burning through me. Um, a few years later was in a, uh, in a relationship that was up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Finally got back into therapy and I found somebody that I could work with. Yeah. So that was my first big lesson <laughs> was uh, if the first person doesn't work, go find somebody else yeah you know i, I just didn't think of that you know, i'm like oh this didn't work no therapy for me yeah it doesn't work uh, yet. yeah yeah well i did my thing mm -hmm. no i didn't i just kind of did a drive-by a few times and it didn't mm -hmm. fly so i gave up on it uh turned out i found somebody who could i could talk to and went to her for a couple of years yeah probably uh, ended up figuring out I needed to become comfortable with myself. So I kind of sort of stopped going out a bunch and spent a lot of time at home and, you know, finally got comfortable being at home by myself, mm -hmm. essentially. Uh, that was a big thing for me. Um, and sold my practice nine years ago. And because I, but it's, by the time that happened, I mean, I hated that thing. What I, was it, the biggest stressors for you uh, from the dental side? I know y you had that compounding factor of, you know, divorce and, and children and the personal yeah, that, side. That kind of worked itself out around 2005, 2006. Then it was mm -hmm. just uh, the personal life, like with the girl I was dating and that sort of nonsense. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't easy. Yeah. Um, uh, I was drinking way too much back then. Um, the, which is which is something that dentists are kind of predispositioned for. Self-medication is a lot easier yeah. than asking for help. Right. <laughs> you know, asking for help is for wimps. That's right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for me, it was, well, I had a lot of doubt in my abilities. Okay. And I told you this one yeah. um, where 
you know, uh, originally my whole thing when I got out of school and I, I want to be a, uh, I want to be a really, really good cosmetic dentist. Mm -hmm. So I took all the classes I could take and, you know, did all, but I was very, um, I had a lot of doubt in terms of my skills. And it wasn't until my lab finally was like, no, you're going to go to this hands-on course. You know, we're going. Because they're one of the labs that work with them. And when I got there, I was like, oh, my God, these people are all, they don't know anything. Uh, so I was like, okay, I feel a lot better uh, with that. That was a huge relief, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, so, the, so some of that self-doubt mm -hmm. got tamped down. I mean, it never goes away. But it, it got uh, put down quite a bit. Um, so, you know, but clinically, something doesn't go right, and you're beating yourself up. Um, yeah. The um, that's a hard one for a I'm, lot of dentists. Yeah. Is the failure? Oh God. The complications. Oh, God. Just yeah, uh, yeah. So much of that, you know, and, and while it doesn't happen often, yeah, that's the stuff you remember. Exactly you right. Yeah. This, you do you're not thinking good about ones. the stuff that did yeah. great. You know, yeah. you're not thinking about the patient that loves you and is going to send you a Christmas card for the rest of their life. Yeah. Uh, it's it's the one that went sideways or or the guy that for real just mails his denture back to you. <laughs> uh, that happened. That's I kept crazy. that denture in the box in a drawer in my office. Keeps me humble. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that, that's the stuff that grinds on you. And, yeah. and then, you know, trying to make, I mean, there were years I'm just trying to make payroll and I'm not paying myself. I didn't take a vacation for 10 years, like a real wow. vacation. I didn't go anywhere. Uh, so when I sold my practice, I took the better part of a year off. I, I burned all that money just yeah. to not do anything. <laughs> I had to have shoulder surgery too. So that didn't that help. Yeah. Uh, that, that kept me out of the game for a while, but you know, I was like, I'm taking time off time off and uh i needed to well i, I think really there's a statistic to. i don't know if i have it handy but i think it's like only 10 percent of dentists take vacation i would take time off yeah but i wouldn't go anywhere and i mm -hmm. and i wouldn't take a chunk the only time i really took a chunk of time off was usually around my daughter's birthday which was early june and around the holidays I would take some time off, but then you're frantic with the holidays, you know, it's yeah. Hard, like, yeah, yeah, time yeah. off. Right. It's not necessarily uh, a vacation. No, no, yeah. not at all. And uh, so I would take more long weekends, mm -hmm. not really right. recharge. Mm -hmm. uh, my life's a lot different in that respect now. Yeah. Um, the, now I'm taking a week off essentially every 11 weeks or so. Great. 10 or 11. I mean, well, I think, I think as, as regimented. young, as young doctors, we have these compounding factors where we have debt. We feel like we need to, we're never comfortable with where we are, whether it's respect or money or whatever. We always want to get better. And yeah. the burnouts happen so much faster that way. And I think it almost takes like, for me personally, I had to kind of be at the bottom in order to realize like, hey, I need to take some time off. I need to realize that, you know, not everything is dentistry, not everything is related to yeah. going into the office. And it, I was to the point where I'm like, I don't see what else I could be doing because uh, there was just a whole confluence of factors that all happened at once mm -hmm. uh, over the course of about five years that it's a miracle that practice survived, <laughs> honestly. Uh, I, I found a great office manager, yeah. basically. Uh, brought her in, interviewed her. It was actually with my ex-girlfriend with the up and down crap. But we sat down and talked to her one evening. And I'm like, ah, I'm not sure. And she's like, you better hire her mm -hmm. yesterday. And she couldn't have been more right. Um, you know, she turned the plan. I basically just turned over the, I'm like, figure this out i'm gonna yeah. worry about dentistry well when you and... can get good staff members like this is something that catalan and i were talking about a few days ago is when you can get good staff members and they can make some decisions for you you know you don't have to oversee every decision that they make it takes out this stress because the more decisions we make every day the more stress we have 
Yeah, and, and that was a huge one for me. Uh, at one point I had, I think it was, I mean, it was just me. I had a couple of hygienists and I think I had seven or eight people working with, for me at one point. And we, it wasn't accomplishing anything. By the end, by the time I sold my practice, it was me, my hy- assistant, my office manager, and my hygienist. And that was it. And yeah. Lean that's and all mean. we needed. Yeah. yeah. And it cut down the drama. Everybody got along. Yeah. You know, uh, people would chip in to help the other person. It wasn't, mm-hmm. it wasn't like all the other years. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and and that was that was t- that was so huge for me. Yeah, um, yeah, I still miss my team. Yeah, I don't miss owning the practice. Yeah, but I miss my team. Um, but yeah, that's that's a big big thing is to be able to have people that can handle things without you having to handle them. So let me ask you this: What made you join Lightside? Um. It was a curious combination of things all happening together again, just like life does this to you, right? Um, you know, I think you started talking about it in August. Yeah, it sounds right. I think. Mm-hmm. And so we'd been in the grind of the pandemic for months at that mm-hmm. point. Uh, you know, I was, my, the, the practice I'm in is, is really quite large. It's, I, Somewhere between 50, 55 people work there. I don't know. Wow. I, I, it, it's like, who are you? Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> um, I, I literally, at one point, I, after I was working there for about a year and a half, we all walked outside at once to go have a group picture taken. I'm like, who is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was kidding. Yeah. Um, it's a big facility and all that. But I was one of the eight people that was deemed, you're going to be here during that time. So mm-hmm. I would go in once or twice a week or so for emergency stuff only. And uh, so I was sort I was still gainfully employed and all that mm-hmm. stuff. And they, they paid everybody. They've just put everybody on like quarantine furlough yeah. and paid everybody the whole time. Amazingly. Um, so I had a little bit of stuff to do. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't like the people that everything was shut down. You couldn't do anything. Yeah. Um, um, but at the same time, it's a weird existence. I don't know if I'm going into the office until 5.30 the night before. Mm. You, can't, you can't figure a schedule around yeah. any of that. Um, so it's so un, unstructured. It was completely unstructured. And, and w- at least in terms of work stuff, none of us are very good at unstructured. <laughs> yes. We have a schedule, and we right. have our days, and mm-hmm. we're doing this, that, and the other. And if you have block scheduling, it's even more structured yeah. and the whole thing. So we're kind of predisposed, I think, to wanting to have at least that level of structure in our lives. Yeah. And it was gone. That was gone. And um, the so there was that, there was the anxiety of that going on, mm-hmm. um, the, all the uncertainty, uh, all the, the, the political stuff going on, um, regardless of where you are on that spectrum, it was still like, chaos in yeah. everybody's brain all the time and i could feel the depression creeping in mm. and it was late mid to late june i really started to notice it yeah. and i'm like oh i know i know what this is you know i'm not happy about this uh so i was paying some attention to it um uh my girlfriend and i uh We've been together. Uh, we've been together nine years now, uh, so we're pretty used to each other. But we we both decided, you know what? We just quit drinking for a month in the middle mm-hmm. of that. Just, and I was like, let's see Great. if that helps. That did not help. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I had high hopes. No. Um, and so she reached out to uh, via telemedicine uh, to a group that uh, does everything. Yeah remotely Mm -hmm. and so she got on some antidepressants and and, you know they do some real low-key um therapy but i did i got on the phone with my therapist Mm -hmm. again i hadn't talked to her in quite a while and set up time for me to have regular appointments with her um i went out and talked to the same group and got on some got on antidepressant again and uh 
and then you you start talking about the course at the same time all this is happening so it was just like <clears throat> and i'm like ham and han ham and han i'm like yeah I, you know should i do this shouldn't i do this i'm like well, if nothing else, I need the CE because this year's CE has <laughs> gone to the toilet. <laughs> and I, let's do something interesting, you know, listen to yeah. somebody I find, you know, worth listening to. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was just a confluence of, of factors. So that was yeah. the main reason I, I, I joined up. And I had no, once again, I'm figuring oh, I'll just be, you know, everybody's going to be sort of like this or they'll, they'll, they're going to have their shit figured out or, or whatever yeah and it turned out that wasn't the case at all <laughs> we we're all in varying boats in the same ocean <laughs> yeah some of us had little boats so us had bigger boats so us had leaks some of us were getting swamped by rogue waves right and you know so it, it was this entirely um a pretty wide variety of situations yeah I'd yeah, say. I love, you know, um, that first group that we on. had was great. We had people that were a year out, people that were 44 years out, mm -hmm. people that had gone through bankruptcy, divorce, uh, wanting we're to in quit the dentistry, <laughs> were in the middle of it, uh, yeah. big successes, big million dollar practices, small bankruptcy, you know, like we had everything, male, yeah. female, uh, New Zealand, all uh, over the world. Uh, yeah, all over the world. And I think what that verified for me is that this isn't an American thing. This isn't a male thing. This isn't a no. female thing. You know, this isn't a 40 year old thing, a 60, like this is just dentists go through this and yeah. dentists from around the world. We all have these similarities. We all go through hard times. Like you said, some are much worse. Some are, you know, better. It's all, but it's all relative. Yeah. Also, yeah. You know, it's so completely subjective. So what to me might be a minor inconvenience might be damn near the end of the world for somebody else. That's right. Yeah. If it's the first time they're going through it as well, which we or had some of those people in the on course. what their value structure is. Right. That particular thing may be way more important to them mm -hmm. than it is on my scale. Yeah. And that that can't be disregarded. You yeah, know, everybody's, as you said, over and over and over, everybody's got their own path. Yeah. And, and you had to remind at one point, you had to remind me because I kind of forget uh, that I've been, I, I started at least trying to do something about this 18 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to varying levels of <laughs> success. But not everybody started looking at this stuff 18 years ago. You know, yeah. Some people it was, you know, 18 hours ago, you know, yes. That's <laughs> when right. they started this course, much That's less right. 18 days. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there, uh, uh, I'm, uh, I know for a fact, there were some people that this was the very first time they'd ever talked about any of this stuff with anybody. Yeah. That's at, right. On any level. Um, and it was to us, not even like a professional therapist or something, mm -hmm. but, um, I think the broad spectrum of, of experiences um, was very helpful yeah. with that. Completely unexpected. I had no idea what to expect, yeah. to be honest. I was just yeah. like, I didn't know what to expect okay. either because it was the first time that I had done it. It was something I had dreamed yeah. of doing. I didn't know if anybody would sign up. So, you know, it was, it was great to have over 20 people sign up. Yeah. What, what were the big takeaways for you? Because I'm interested in this because like you said, you've been on a mental health path. Mm -hmm. Your success path started long before Lightside. Oh, so, I wouldn't say it's a success path. <laughs> it's just a eventually, path. yeah. Right. Um, it, well, I, you know what? I'm. Um, I, I think I can look back and realize I got cocky in the past about it, mm. and I'm like, you know what? I'm good. I don't need to worry about this anymore. Just because I didn't need to worry about that for a number of years clearly did not mean i was out in the woods okay yeah. i just hit a clearing for a while and all of a sudden hey look tree <laughs> um so uh that was number that was one of my big takeaways of this whole year was hold on a second you're not done with this yeah and thankfully i was one of the good things about not being super busy all summer long was I was able to be a little more mindful 
-hmm. you know i wasn't on the treadmill quite as bad mm -hmm. like i i wasn't showing up i was getting to the office at eight and leaving at eight yeah <laughs> kind of thing uh every day and so that gave my brain time to kind of consider what was actually going on in my brain mm -hmm. um, so that was very fortunate but the take one of the things that i liked about the way you put everything together was the fact that everything's in modules mm -hmm. and it makes sense you know it's a progression yeah now we and i you and i we and i you and i both talked we talked about this at one point in the later modules where i got really stuck in the quicksand yeah i remember um you know i'm doing real well with the this is everything that's wrong with me but how do i go to that part <laughs> <laughs> um so I was, I, I could do the post-mortem, so to speak, <laughs> pretty well, but it was the looking at, and, and again, the whole dentist thing started happening. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on this. I got to focus on it. I've got my notebook that I was keeping mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden it's the equivalent of you can't get this patient numb <laughs> or <laughs> you can't get right. this impression. You know, yeah. you've taken the impression six, six times, times. why yeah. you still have oh a pull yeah. on this <laughs> crap. <laughs> uh, I remember those days. <laughs> um, and that was, that was where my brain was going yeah. was I'm screwing this up. I can't get this part right. Mm -hmm. And I had to step back. Well, you, you helped with this too, but I had to step back and say, okay, Take a couple of deep breaths. You don't have to de get this done now. Yeah. You don't have to be good at all of this. Now. You don't have to be good at any of this. Yeah. Now. Yeah. You have to see what is on the menu here. Take a look and say, okay, uh, this is what I'm going to look at right now. Yeah. Because this is a, I, I don't have the time or the mental strength or the energy to work on that. Well, I, I always like to, I always like to relate it back to physical health. And you brought up a good point. It's like, you wouldn't start out, you know, say, okay, I'm going to start going to the gym. And immediately you're, you're, you're pushing up 400 pounds, right? right. You got to work on this and it takes time. And, you know, what you were saying before is like, you hit a clearing, you thought, hey, I'm good. And then tree in the face, right? It's, I think it's oh, yeah. the exact same thing with, with our health is that, it's something we have to constantly work on. I mean, it's why we do continuing education units, right? Because we forget stuff. We get set in our ways. We think we're good. But if you want to be healthy, you know, you have to, you have to eat correctly. You have to, um, you know, exercise correctly. You have to, your mental health is something that is just, you have to maintain, which is yeah. why I think uh, meditation has become so popular now. It's getting so popular because people are realizing that this is something you maintain. This isn't something you start, you do once, and then you're done, right? This is right. a journey. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it, um, I'm still working on this. I mean, when, when did we wrap so this up? So am I. <laughs> when, when did we, we will be the rest our, of our, our lives module uh, mid-October or something yeah. like that mm -hmm. and I'm still like I'm still trying to get past my first step yeah. in the final group of things yeah I'm like because I'm like this is what I'm going to work on and Great. I'm still working on it it's I love to hear that two and a two and a half months later three yeah. mo almost three months later and in fact I was just talking to uh, my telehealth counselor mm -hmm. about because the, the, the main thing I've been working on is sleep. Yeah, great. Uh, Which is something that we go over in the course for yeah. people that haven't and, taken it. And I've been having the worst time of, of insomnia of my entire life mm. in the last number of months. Mm -hmm. It's getting better. Good, good to hear. <laughs> um, but it's taken months <laughs> to get yeah. here. Yeah. You know? And uh, that that's that's pretty frustrating. Mm -hmm. you, it's a basic thing you have to do to live. And I can't even sleep right? What yeah. kind of dummy am I? <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, I've been doing this my whole life, and I somehow can't do it. So it, it's, I've start, I started monitoring. I, I kind of did what the kind of thing you would probably do. Yep. I mon monitor it. Get data. Record mm -hmm. stuff. 
take a look to see. Turns out I wasn't sleeping quite as terribly as I thought I was. I wasn't sleeping well. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, you know, I was getting more than the hour or two I thought I was getting. Yeah. But not, not by a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Now it's improving. Uh, and so that, that's kind of the thing is one thing at a that's I'm the trying path, to approach right? one thing that's at a time. That's the next step in the path, right? Yeah. As long as and we're progressing. Back, mm-hmm. Yeah. And going back to what you were saying about the gym sort of thing. Yeah. With these sorts of, whether you want to look at it as exercises or mindfulness or whatever it is, mm-hmm. you know what? One day a week is better than none. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you can get to two, awesome. Yep. Then worry, then worry about every other day, some other day. Yeah. Um, and again, that's not, that's not an easy place for our mindset. Yeah. You know, we're all like, we're going to boom. Yeah. We're going to nail this full arch case. And yeah. Rah, 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 rah. And right. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, it just, it's not, yeah. It occlusion doesn't... isn't something that is, uh, oh. is like, you can have one side, right. I'll get one tooth, right. And I'll worry about the rest later. Yeah. yeah. No, it doesn't work quite that way. You know, and, you know, and, and it, occlusion is one of those things where for me it was, I'm doing all this pressed ceramic stuff. And mm-hmm. finally you're like, you start doing enough this, you're like, why is my stuff breaking? Yeah. <laughs> and so now you start learning about occlusion yeah. more. And, uh, and so that's all a progression too, but you, you can't do it all at once. And that's our mindset. So, um, so tell me this, right? um, you've been on your mental health path for a while mm-hmm. you've taken light side you're still working on it what is your mm-hmm. advice for young doctors or doctors that maybe haven't gone through um a depressive episode or an anxiety episode or you know stress episode let's say what is what is your advice for them uh first bit of advice would be as if you don't feel like you're in control of your like the the you can't control your anxiety you know you're just doom and gloom uh you know you're dreading everything you're going into the office you're not sleeping well you're drinking too much whatever the case get help just ask for help mm-hmm. that's the hardest thing to do it is literally the hardest thing to do but all you get there there are so many resources out there nowadays with the pandemic the telehealth thing is becoming way more accepted yeah and you can get help without going anywhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, the group I was dealing with is called Cerebral. Okay. Look them up. I think it's Get Cerebral or something like that. Yeah. If you look up Cerebral Mental you'll Health Telehealth or something, yeah. you'll find them. And, you know, it's flat rate, a monthly thing, and they, they, the hell, they send you your meds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to go to the office. You don't need to be worried about, like, embarrassment or anything like that. I'm... Yeah. I'm not going to be embarrassed going to the doctor and asking for medication at this stage of, in the path. But there was a time I was. Sure. Yeah. You know, there was very much a time I was. Yeah. I think um, there's another... even there's even a stigma with some yes. dentists that have that have contacted me. They're worried about joining a mental health course. You know. They're... Yeah. No. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, uh, for you know, uh, during my as a uh, solo practitioner career there was a period of time i had there was a period of time i just didn't have health insurance because i couldn't afford to get have health insurance believe it or not um but there was that that if you get help for this so you you're, you're having to self you know get get insurance on your own mm-hmm. you may have just gotten yourself on uninsur- made yourself uninsurable <laughs> back 15 years ago oh, geez yeah you know you mm-hmm. go and you get yourself onto Zoloft or whatever, and now you got a big red mark in your file, right? And you can't get individual insurance anymore. Mm-hmm. So that was also a concern. Yeah. Um, but thankfully nowadays that's not the situation. Yeah. Um, but that's number one: is if you if you feel like you, just ask for help. But the other suggestion I would definitely have, and, and this is going to sound a little bit on the weird side. <laughs> Therapy isn't just when you're not feeling great. And I keep forgetting that. Yes. It's I'm, a maintenance a thing, right? Dummy. Yeah. yeah. And so I let myself go months and months and months and months. Like, I think at one point uh, I went up almost a year and I didn't talk to my therapist because my girlfriend, and I got a therapist a while back and 
probably four years ago, and she's awesome. Yeah. Um, but I just have to make the damn appointment. Yeah, <laughs> I know, <laughs> you know? We're busy people. <laughs> and um, and with the telehealth thing, because she went from never wanting to do that to, hey, I can see the real advantages to it now. Um, again, you don't have to leave the house. Yeah. Set up in the office and yeah, the conversation. There's almost no excuses anymore. But it's become affordable. I, I think, it's become accessible. You know. Yeah, and I mean, if you have an FSA type account, you can mm -hmm. run it off of that. Yeah. You know. Uh, but the uh, therapy should be more prevalent. Yeah. Essentially, mm -hmm. uh, I I think that I would have felt a lot better about life if I had, had somebody to talk to that was non-judgmental. Yeah. Uh, at any point when I owned my practice, much less now. Yeah. But I mean, that was going to talk. That was talk one of me? the reasons why I wanted to put together a community because someone who actually was in the course, um, who's a friend of mine years ago, she had said, Hey, will you put together like a, a community therapy session for dentists? And I'm like, well, I'm not a therapist. And they're like, yeah, I don't care. I just want someone to talk to. I just want people that understand what I'm going through. Yeah. Well, the isolation is so extreme mm -hmm. in this profession, yeah. Um, which is something that you, we talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and for me, it was, it became even more so. Um, I have had a brief conversation with one of my classmates mm -hmm. in the last year. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, I don't think I talked to one of my classmates since I don't even know. Yeah. Uh, I just don't have dentist friends. Yeah. Um, and I think that's important to not yeah. necessarily maybe even have dentist friends, but just have dentists that you can talk to because it's yeah. so, it's so specific what we go through, you know, exactly. doctors may understand a little bit. Lawyers may understand a little bit. Business owners may understand a little bit, but to really get to the gist of it, you need yeah. another dentist. And immediately when you, when yeah. you connect with another dentist, it's like, ah, oh, you get it. Cause my wife doesn't get it. My husband doesn't get it. My parents don't get it. My friends don't get it. You yeah. need that. And at the same time, you can't let that conversation just be about the office, hmm. you know, Oh, talk about overhead or talking <laughs> right. about this or talking about that. I mean, I remember <laughs> this is, 12, 13 years ago, I was out to dinner with uh, my periodontist and uh, a, a, a number of his referrals. Mm -hmm. And we just would get together once in a while and chit chat or have a, a study club or whatever. And this time we were just going to dinner, but that's all they would talk about. Finally, at one point I, I stood up and they're like, what's going on? I was like, if you guys can't think of something else to talk about yeah. other than this, I got other things I could be doing tonight yeah. with my time. Yeah. <laughs> and the conversation changed, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a nice dinner. Um, so th there's a point where you need to be talking about other stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah. The deep no stuff that gonna... no one wants to talk about. Yeah. And nobody's going to relate to this stuff. Maybe, maybe a chiropractor who's got mm -hmm. a solo office. Right. But, you know, maybe a vet. A vet, yeah. A solo mm -hmm. practice. But you, you're talking, but even at the same time, they don't have the same issues with, so yeah. People don't get up in the morning and go, man, I hate chiropractors. Right. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, you're not coming at most people with a syringe at some <laughs> point or another. Um, it, it's, a, it's a different mindset. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, you, uh, having some sort of community that you can talk to. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I think, I think the, that's one of the things. What you brought up with therapy goes back to that whole uh, relating mindfulness, stress reduction, whatever it is, to general health is that there has to be a maintenance that happens with it, right? Yeah. So like, oh, absolutely. There's, you know, if you're exer if you're in great shape, you can still exercise, right? Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't get to great shape and then just wait until, you know, you're bad again and get to great shape and wait till you're right. bad again. It's the same thing with, with diet or with, you know, any of the, the derm stuff that we talk about in the course. Um, and and therapy mindfulness whatever it is just uh, thinking about your mental health giving your mental health the time of day whether it's 15 minutes a day 10 minutes a day five minutes a day like taking five just minutes even two yes two. to just like you know? take a breath 
uh, you know, meditate, pray, be thankful, have gratitude, like just taking, like you said, two minutes because we're so if frazzled. You, if, if you do nothing else, then when you get home in your car, you don't get out of your car until you've taken a minute or two to just like take a few deep breaths and yep. you don't bring that crap with you into the house. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Your marriage might survive that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Mine didn't. Yeah. Um, you know, um, because all I was was a hundred percent stress all yeah. the time. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I, I'm not the biggest joy to be with all the time anyway. I mean, that's got to be the worst possible scenario. <laughs> you know, high strung enough. We don't need that. Right. Bringing um, home all that but, stress. Yeah. Just taking a minute or two to just try to leave it in the car. Yeah. Because you know what? When you get in the car in the morning to go to the office, it's going to be right there waiting for you. You don't yep. need to bring it inside mm -hmm. if you can help it. I mean, you yeah. can't always do that, but you yeah. know, it's it's a nice thought. But that that would be a huge step for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It was for me. Yeah, I know it was for me. You know, and uh, the same held true when I would get to the office. At, at, there were certain parts and points in my life where I had to make it a point where I got to the office. I stopped. I took a minute to not bring my personal crap in with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that was a, I that was can driving compound. around yeah. 50 pound weight of mm -hmm. personal problems. Yeah. And that was a real problem because mm -hmm. um, it affected everything else. It yeah. affected, you know, how I interacted with my team, yep. how I interacted with my patients, how I interacted with myself. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just trying to create these invisible boundaries I like that as much as you can. Mm -hmm. That really helps, you know, yeah. and you know, it's uh, well, and some of it also boils down to what we talked, uh, we talked about briefly earlier in the week about stress, mm -hmm. you know, there's two kinds. You got good. You got bad. Yeah. You don't have any, you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> our entire, our entire existence is nothing but reacting to stressors, whether yeah. it's positive or negative mm -hmm. and our biochemistry reacting to all that with, yeah. you know with whichever hormone the body re, re releases it's all the same yeah it's just a matter of how do you deal with it yeah deal with, um, dealing with it controlling it being mindful of it this is uh this has been really controlling good your reaction to it you know yeah. controlling your reaction to it not you can't control the stress <laughs> yeah well Elliot, but no i would this yeah. has been great i think you have been so brave in coming on. I really appreciate you taking taking the time out of your busy day, um, you know, talking openly about what you've been through. Because I know I can guarantee that I'm going to get messages saying, "Thank you for being so honest about this." Because every time I have someone on and they share openly and honestly, there's so many other people that think they're the only one, and I know mm -hmm. there's. You know, I know I did tens, hundreds, maybe thousands of dentists that went through what you're you've gone through or are going through it now and thought, you know, I thought I was the only one. And for you to share this so openly and, you know, talk about your journey. I'm uh, I really appreciate you and I, oh. I really applaud you for doing that. It's my pleasure. And if anybody that watched this needs to just talk to somebody shoot me a dm fantastic just follow me and shoot me a dm um i might not have any good answers for you but i'll think of yeah something. we'll listen at least, or right? try to put point you in a direction mm -hmm. um but it may be something that one of us is fairly familiar with because you know i've you've told a little bit to us about your journey and yeah talk to you about mine and well, they're certainly not the same. There's some similarities. In For there. sure. Um, mm -hmm. But they're definitely not the same. Yeah. And I can say that about everybody that was in the course mm -hmm. was we all had our stuff, but nobody had the same pile of stuff. That's right. Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, and I imagine as time goes on, as, as you do more of these, you're going to, it's going to be a pretty interesting collection of people's stuff. Yeah. You know, because there's going to be stuff that comes out of left field that you're like, whoa. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's a, uh, I found it to be very helpful for me to, because as I was saying before, I, I was good at the first part, mm -hmm. the first few modules. I was like, okay, this is like 
slam dunk piece of cake. I'm good with this. And then I had to start really thinking about what I do after that. <laughs> and that was a huge kick in the pants. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. um, and so that's been, been helpful. And, and I'm not doing as much as I should, but. But I'm you're human. Do right. And you're I'm making progress. Right now. And you're at least thinking about it. That's like, yeah. you know, step one. Realizing yep, there was a I, problem. Step two, you know, defining the problem. So yeah, you're. And, and I've already got my next appointment set up with my regular therapist. Great. <laughs> so Great. For a couple of weeks, and I'm just I'm planning on staying on that at least once a month, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, for a while. Mm-hmm. And you know, I I need the tune up. She's like, yeah. "What's going on?" I'm like, "I need a tune up. I'm just yeah. This is maintenance stuff. I don't have a specific issue." She's like, That's "Okay, right. cool. Good. Yeah. You know." So that that would be a, a great takeaway on that. But no, anytime, I'm more than happy to chat, help Thank out any you. way I can. Really yeah. appreciate it. Uh, I'm so glad that you were a part of the first course. For anyone else so that I. is that is out there, the course cart is open now for waitlist only. It opens for the general population on Monday. You can get on the waitlist by going to my link in bio. And uh, I hope to see you guys there, Elliot. Thanks again. Really, really appreciate your time and your openness. So, Always uh, great to talk to you. Thanks. You too, buddy. Talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Absolutely. See Take you later. Care. Bye-bye.